Well, I think we've seen um, a lot of evidence in the last six months that we should see trade data improving. Uh, I think the, the concern about Japan at the current time is that uh, you're getting more um, of a deterioration in import growth than you're getting an expansion of, of export growth. And I, I think the, the strength of the yen is one of those things and the, the, um, the uncertainty about the supply chain in, the, in, in, in Japan has also become a bit of an issue. So I think Japan probably needs a weaker yen and we need to see the Bank of Japan probably stimulating the economy again. Well, uh, the Bank of Japan governor, uh, Kuruda, has, um, has made it clear that he wants to see the political uh, fraternity introducing economic reform, what they call the third arrow. And I think there's an element of BOJ waiting to see what, uh, what uh, Shinzo Abe's uh, administration does. But I think ultimately the BOJ needs to, to loosen policy again because it has an objective of 2% inflation. The stronger the yen gets, the more difficult that objective uh, becomes to meet. So the, ultimately, I think BOJ has to increase QE again. Well, as an institution at, at Coots, we, we still favor um, the Asia-Pacific part of the emerging markets world. And, and we quite like the markets of India and Indonesia because we think the politics represent change and uh, investing in change is typically uh, a good thing. Um, we like the reform pro program that's, that's uh, taking place in India uh, and also the, the, in the infrastructure and investment cycle that you're getting in the Philippines continues to be attractive uh, to our minds. So I think there are opportunities over the next six to 12 months uh, in Asia Pacific and, and those, are, those are, are, are ones that we would like to, to put our clients into as well. I think the difficulty for markets at the current time is that a lot of the expansion of the earnings multiples in uh, the American market, um, a lot of that has come from additions of liquidity to the market. It's not necessarily being brought through from uh, renewed uh, or accelerated growth. And I think the, the discussion that's taking place within the Fed at the current time of how to exit the policy of quantitative easing whether that's through uh, reducing bond purchases uh, now or raising interest rates uh, sooner rather than later. That's causing a little bit of uh, uncertainty in markets and, and we're starting to see the same thing happening in the United Kingdom. So we're in a process of transitioning from an abundance of liquidity to one where liquidity is less plentiful and I think that's causing the volatility in markets that we're currently experiencing.